a little late. Uh, welcome to Financial Aid Night. We have a, a lady from the Finance Authority of Maine who's an expert on free money, and we'll be talking about that tonight. Um, this is our 20th time doing this, our 20th annual uh, Financial Aid Night, so uh, this is a special Yay. night. Okay. So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you, this is Nikki Vachon. Yep, Nikki Vachon. Um, so, I'm Nikki Vachon. Uh, you can just yell Nikki if you have questions. I would like to point out that I have not done the past 20 financial aid nights. <laughs> However, um, I have been in financial aid for 17 years. So, for those of you doing math, I started when I was 12. Um, and I am a financial aid geek. So, um, I will talk for hours to anyone who will listen, but I promise that I, I understand that hearing about financial aid is not always like super exciting. So, I'm going to use hand gestures and maybe dance steps, we'll see how it goes. Um, but what I want from you guys is if you have questions or you can't hear me, let me know because chances are if you have a question, somebody else has the same question. I, I do this, uh, this speech over and over again, so I kind of forget what I've said to who, so please ask questions. I'm, I'm totally happy with that. Um, so what we're going to talk about tonight is financial aid. I understand you guys are seniors, maybe some juniors. Do we have any juniors? Awesome. Planning ahead. I love it. Um, we have the seniors. This is a perfect time for you guys, too. So there was a, book, a green book up at front. If you guys don't have it, feel free to take one with you. A lot of the things that we're going to talk about tonight, there's more information and I'll reference at the bottom of the slide where you can find more information about it. So we're going to be talking about like what you should be doing right now. Like what's, what, how can you find an affordable way to go to college, right? Because we've all seen those those news clippings with someone that says I'm $100,000 in debt and I have a degree in basket weaving, let's not do that. So that's, that's our goal is to not do that, right? That's my, that's my life's dream. Um, we're going to talk about how to apply for aid, how to reduce your expenses because it's not a fix-all, right? Financial aid is not the only thing that's going to help you pay for school. Sometimes we can reduce expenses. We're going to talk about saving for college, which is my favorite topic ever. Um, education credits, there's all kinds of resources that are out there for you. So we're going to cover all that in hopefully about 45 minutes. Um, so this, I always like to start with why it's important. Why is college important? And I know you guys all know, like I understand, it's, I got to get a degree, whatever. Um, but what I'd love for you guys to see on the right hand side, the green, will show you that on average, the more education that you get, and this is not the case for everybody, but on average, the more education you have, the more you're likely to learn. So there's a statistic that if you have a bachelor's degree, you will earn a million, a million dollars more in your lifetime than someone with just a high school degree. So if you want to become a millionaire, get a bachelor's degree. Kind of, right? Uh, but basically, you have a chance to make more money, but more importantly, what I love on the red, the red side, the your left, is the unemployment rate. So the more education that you have, the more opportunities that you have when times get tough, you might lose your job, you have more opportunities to apply for more jobs. So I know my seniors, you guys feel like you've been in school forever, right? Like at some point in time you say, I just, I can't be in school, I've been in school for my entire life, I can't do it anymore. But this is why, this is why you're doing this, it's really important. Okay, so financial aid exists to help families pay for college. It is not the one thing that's gonna fix this, the whole thing. So financial aid, with financial aid, I want you to know that the feds think that when they're going to help you pay for college, it's there to help you pay, but some sacrifice is um, expected. I have three kids in college, they're my stepchildren, thankfully we have four parents between us to help pay for it. So I'm here to tell you it actually can be done, but we've had to make a lot of choices, you know, like going on vacations or not, to be able to help pay for college. So, but financial aid is a major piece on helping you pay for college. So what, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. There's two types of financial aid. There's need-based aid and there's merit-based aid. So need-based aid is when you apply for financial aid. That's what we're going to focus on. But there's also merit-based aid, which is another thing we're going to talk about a little briefly. But that's based on like things that are, um, you've done, like you've gotten good grades, or maybe you're a great athlete or a musician. 
So you can apply for scholarships based on what's really cool about you. Um, if you're going to be applying for federal aid, you have to file a FAFSA. Has anyone heard of the FAFSA before? F FAFSA? You've done one? Not terrible, right? It's a little bit terrifying at first, the first time you do it, but I promise you once you do it, you're going to realize it's really not that bad. And I'm here to help you. Um, I want everyone to file their FAFSA. Even if you don't think that you're going to get any aid, sometimes scholarship applications require that you send in the results of your aid application, the FAFSA. It's the, fed the free application for federal student aid. That's what FAFSA stands for. So what you should be doing now, my seniors, and my juniors too, start looking for colleges. You guys have any idea where you want to go? You, you kind of got, you, you've started feeling things out. Um, this is going to be one of the largest purchases you ever make in your lifetime. So like if you were going to buy a house, would you just look at one house? No, because it costs too much money. You really want to do some research. You want to look at a bunch of different schools. One of the ways that I want you guys to look at the school is not just is that it's a good fit for you because you're going to be spending a lot of time and money there, but also start looking at what the costs are. So you can go on a website for a college and you can look at what's called a net price calculator. Has anyone heard of this? It's like a financial aid application dry run. That's the way I like to think about it. So any school that has federal aid is required to have this net price calculator on their website. And what you do is you plug in your information, like your income, um, your grade, your SAT scores, um, any activities that you've been in, and it's going to tell you, if you come to our school, this is what we think you're going to get. Now, it's just an estimate, but it's a great way to start looking at schools and say, you know, is this something that I'm going to be able to afford? Keep in mind, this is just an estimate, okay? But what I love about this is that you guys can play around with the grades and the SAT scores, and you can go back in and plug in, you know, what if I brought that grade up just a little bit more? Would that help my financial situation at all? And you might be able to see that if you do maybe retake your SAT score, SATs and get a higher score, you might get more aid. Does that make sense? This is a great way to just start poking around with schools and, and see what the costs are. This is a picture of University of Maine's deadlines. Um, every school has their, their priority deadline, right? So I used to work in the financial aid office and we would have this money to give out. Well, I could only give it out until it ran out, right? There's only so much pie. So we would came up, came up with a deadline to say, if you file for financial aid, if you file your FAFSA by this deadline, you'll be considered for these grant programs. So I'm going to be talking about deadlines. Deadlines are super important. Um, the University of Maine says by, you must file your FAFSA by March 1st to be considered for the most aid possible. So those schools that you're looking at, just go onto their website in the search bar and say deadlines. And maybe you'll get an idea of like, when do I have to do things? What, how can I get the most aid possible? Because sometimes if you apply after a certain date, you might not even be considered for aid, okay? So in that green book on page 24, we have a tracking sheet of all the things that you might be asked for. There's also a place where you put in deadlines, because you guys are going to be looking at a bunch of different schools, and it's really hard to keep track. So we made a little worksheet for you to just start writing things down while you're looking. They're going to ask you to possibly file the FAFSA, but maybe they're going to ask for more things. So it's a good idea to, keep, to realize that for the school that you're looking for, like if you're going to go to University of Maine, they're going to ask you to file the FAFSA to be considered for financial aid. Other schools might ask for like their own forms to be filled out if they have scholarships to give out. Um, but they also might ask for what's called a CSS profile. Has anyone ever heard of that? So there's only three schools in Maine that ask for the CSS profile. It's a, it's a separate financial aid application. That means that they have a lot of institutional money to give out, and they really want to make sure that they're giving it to the right person. So they ask a lot more questions that FAFSA doesn't ask for. If you're going to go to a school that does request that, I would recommend going to their website listed here. There's a tutorial there and a lot of um, great FAQs. 
I had to do this for my stepdaughter, and I, I don't want to scare you guys, but I just, I know what it's like to fill these out and feel like, am I doing this correctly? They have a great um, help desk where you can call if you don't know what's happening, or you can call FAME and we'll help you too. So, another thing that you guys could be doing right now, is anyone looking for scholarships? Free money, yes, please do. Um, scholarships are out there, and I can tell you guys that your chances of getting a scholarship are better than you actually think. Um, a lot of people don't apply, they don't think they're gonna get anything, they don't get it in on time, they don't send in everything that they're supposed to. Um, so just be looking for scholarships. And down bottom, I, just, I totally stole this from a student. So th this girl was so organized, she made this spreadsheet, and she started looking for scholarships, but a lot of them, the deadline had passed. So what she did is she wrote down the scholarship and the deadline and what they were looking for so that next year when that scholarship opened up again, she could apply for it. So what I'm saying is start looking for scholarships and even if that deadline has passed, maybe you can apply for it next year. Whatever works for you guys, put it on your phone, put it on a calendar, you know, set aside a calendar just for scholarship applications, please do that. There's um, a thing called a search engine where you can plug in um, your information like your major, where you want to go to school, and it will find you scholarships that you might be able to apply for, okay? Don't be overwhelmed by this. I want you guys to do two applications a week. That's all I want. That's all I'm asking. Maybe you don't do the dishes on Tuesday nights and you look for scholarships. Is that too much to ask? Parents, <laughs> is that okay? Um, I'm, I'm totally into bribery, totally. Um, so it, please apply for scholarships. I can't tell you, as high school seniors, you will never have this opportunity again to apply for this many scholarships because the older you get, the amount of scholarships that are out there kind of fall off. So please start looking now. My juniors, start looking for next year. I love it. It's perfect. So, yes? Nikki, we've been uh, giving information out to our seniors when we have our senior meetings about uh, basswebweb.com. Yes. That's, that's the one we use all the time. Is there another search engine out there that's better? Um, actually, on page seven, we've listed a handful of search engines, which, and FastWeb is great. I find that FastWeb um, gives you a lot of scholarships that um, it's just a lot. And it seems like that web page is a little busy. So we put in a handful. That's the only reason we didn't list in that book. It's a great resource. But on page seven of your book, there's other um, search engines that you can use, but please use FastWeb as well. Yep. Sure. And do you do like a packet? What do you do for, for local scholarships? We have uh, files where we have local scholarships. And then in March, we have what we call the Hermary Scholarship, where we have a generic application that students fill out. And uh, pretty much everybody gets a little bit of something. Awesome. We have uh, people from the community that give us. Great. Awesome. So you guys all know about this, right? Go to the guidance office, main office. Yeah. Okay. Great. OK, so. My people who have done the FAFSA before, there's been a change in your login information, okay? There used to be a PIN, like you would sign up and get a PIN, and that's gonna be your ele electronic signature for everything, right? They kind of changed this, so for my people who have a PIN, you now need to move to this new system. It's called an FSA ID, Federal Student Aid ID, okay? So what this is, you're gonna, you can do this right now. You can go to the website, fsaid.ed.gov, and apply for your ID. Now, this is going to be your login information to get into the FAFSA, okay? We created a little worksheet here that is out back so that you, the student, can apply for your ID, and a parent needs one as well, okay? So both of you need to do this in order to log in and put your information in. The key to this, I want you guys to remember, is that you need to have an email account um, linked to this. If you don't have an email address, you can still do it. It just takes a little bit more time. But the key to this is you can't use the same email address for the student and the parent, okay? So you guys can both apply for your IDs right now. I got a little sheet here, a little cheat sheet that you can put in all your information, like the challenge questions that they ask you. But you can get your ID now so that when the FAFSA website opens, you're ready to roll. 
Okay, does that make sense? So that's your login information. That's what the website looks like. And now we've moved into, you're going to start applying for fe federal aid. So this is what the FAFSA website looks like, FAFSA.gov. There is another website out there called FAFSA.com um, that the feds have actually commandeered because it was a website that charged you to do the application. Don't ever pay someone to apply for financial aid, okay? I will help you for free, or the guidance office, or really anybody will help you. Um, you can even call them. The, they have a hotline. So FAFSA.gov is the website you're going to use. And we're going to go into that on January 1st, OK? Here's my dream. New Year's Day, we're all just hanging out, right? We're going to watch the Netflix all day. Let's just do the FAFSA that day. The reason I say this is because I want you guys to apply early. Remember how I said there's only so much pie? the financial aid office that we can give out, it gets given out until, until we don't have any left. So a lot of times we'll give out aid to the people who are eligible until we run out. So if you get your application in early, then that's going to make you hopefully eligible for the most aid possible. Okay? So January 1st, the FAFSA website opens. They're going to ask you for your 2015 tax information. Does anyone have their taxes done January 1st? No. No one does. Um, so what you do is you use your estimated information, maybe use 2014's tax information, go in, file your FAFSA, then when you get your taxes done, you go back in and update it. Does that make sense? Okay. So what they're going to ask you is about income. They may or may not ask you about um, your assets, but don't, don't panic if you don't see it. There's something called skip logic in the, federal, in the FAFSA website. Like if you answer a question one way, it may ask you another question because of that. So like if you say, are you a male, it'll ask if you've been registered for selective service. But if I say female, it won't ask me that. So it, when you answer about income, if you don't mean a threshold, you may not be asked about assets. Okay? Now, this is, gonna, this is, this is the question you asked about earlier. Um, this is a very interesting year for you guys. This is, I've been in aid for 17 years, and for all those years, January 1 is the day the FAFSA website opens, and you file for financial aid. Remember how I said you use estimated information, you get your tax done, you go back in? Well, from now on, I still, January 1, we're still going to do our, our FAFSA for the fall semester, right? In October, you're going to do another FAFSA, and that's going to be for your second year in college, okay? So they're changing the, the day that the FAFSA website opens from January 1 to October 1, and this is the only year you're going to have to do two in one year, because then from the now on, it's going to be October 1st, okay? So for my seniors, January 1, you're going to apply for your freshman year. You're going to go to the FAFSA website, you're going to uh, you fill out the FAFSA, and that's going to be for your freshman year. And then in October, you're going to file for your sophomore year. We good with that? Here's the kicker, and stay with me on this one. They're going to ask for 2015 tax information both times, okay? The reason that they're doing this is because they don't want you to have to go in, put your income in, file your taxes, then go back in. Okay? They want you to do it one and done. This is another way they're trying to make this process simpler, and I'm in love with it. It's hard to explain, but it's going to make this process simpler for you. So, um, so we're all good with, I did it one more way just so you guys can see. For the, oh, I just, made a, I just realized I made a mistake there. So January 1, we're going to do the fast, but then we're going to go back in October 1 and do it again. Yes? A junior. Only October 1. Yes. So for my juniors, only October 1. Right? Does that make sense? Thank you for that, because I was going to mention that. Anyone else? Questions? This is kind of a weird, this is such a weird year, but it, it's, it's great. It's a very good idea. Okay, so like when I said that deadlines matter, I just like to see this is just a stunning graphic to say. When you apply for financial aid, deadlines matter. 
So what I did here was just an example of Nikki's University. Say you submitted your FAFSA on January 15th, I could look at all of those programs and say, yep, you qualify, you qualify, you qualify, and I send you an award letter that's saying, I got your FAFSA, this is what I think you're eligible for, and I've got all these things listed on it. But say you wait till March 15th to file the FAFSA, because you want to wait till your taxes are done, or you know, I don't know why you would wait to do it, but by now, a lot of this money's been given out, so deadlines do matter, that's, that's all this is saying. So, you file your FAFSA, and by the next day, you're going to be emailed what's called a student aid report. So important. Take a look at this, guys. Um, a student aid report is just a summary to say, this is everything you told us on the FAFSA, okay? You're going to immediately spot an error. I can't tell you every year I had a student say they made $999,000. And that's going to stand out to you guys. I mean, it would to me. I don't Whatever, if you made that much money, then I want to know what you're doing. <laughs> so take a look at your student aid report. And if you made a mistake, you can go back in and update it. The FAFSA is kind of a, a, a living, breathing thing. You can go up and make changes to it as many times as you need to. There's something called the IRS data retrieval tool. Have you guys used this? It's pretty slick. This is a couple years old. So when you're in the, the FAFSA, what you can do is say, I've already filed my taxes, it's been a few weeks, so the IRS should have it. And then you can link out to the IRS website and pull your tax information in. You don't have to enter those numbers in, because I can tell you, people make mistakes. I make mistakes. I invert numbers. It's crazy. But if you can use this IRS data retrieval tool, it's awesome. Okay? If you need help with it, we will help you, but just follow directions and it's... All they really ask is that they're very specific about the address that you use. Um, like I had some people who lived on 2nd Street, so their taxes had 2ND, but when they typed it in, they said 2nd, S-E-C-O-N-D, and it didn't, the IRS didn't like that. So just be careful about the addresses on your taxes, and it's slick. Highly recommend it. So you file your FAFSA, you get a student aid report, but so doesn't your school. So they get sent a copy automatically. All the schools that you list, you can list a bunch of schools. Every school that you're thinking about, send them a copy. On the FAFSA, it'll ask, who do you want us to send this to? And you just tell them and they just send it electronically. So on that student aid report, you're going to get what's called an EFC, an expected family contribution. This is named horribly, okay? Um, the expected family contribution is just really a measurement of your family's financial strength. It's a way for me and the financial aid office to put you guys in a line to say who has the most need and who has the least amount of need, okay? So don't panic when you see the number. I, I have yet to see anyone who says, yep, that's right, except for the people who have the zero EFC, they say, yep, that's right. <laughs> so that's all that that is. But what it is not is how much you're going to pay to go to school. So you get this expected family contribution but you're going to look at several different schools and the cost of that school is going to be different for each school that you're looking at. They're going to only use that to determine what aid programs that you're in. Just keep in mind that the bill could be different. Maybe you're going to go to a local school and not live on campus, so you know, it could be cheaper for you to go to school, but you may go out of state and have to live on campus, so that bill may be driven up. So it's just not what you have to pay. It's just a measurement, it's just a, we're actually trying to change the, um, the name of this because it's, it's, not, it's not a great name. Don't panic when you see it, that's the takeaway. So, you've sent your FAFSA out to all these schools and then probably by March you're gonna get what's called an award letter. And the award letter says, this is what I think you're eligible for and this is what you need to do to get it. So it's not like the end of the road, there's more steps to it. You, they may ask you for more documentation, okay? Um, know, when you start to research schools, find out how they send you the award letter, because some schools email it to you. Maybe they email it just to the student, and you could be waiting like for months and say, I, I didn't get anything. But it might go to the, the student only. Um, at Hassan, they would mail the award letter their first year, and then from then on out, they will only email it to the student's email address. So just find out what, that, what the school you're looking at, how they handle it. Oh, one more thing I just do want to cover. When you get this, 
take a look at all the items on there and see what those things are. Um, a lot of times, if there's a scholarship, if you're going to get it, if like say it's a renewable scholarship for a couple of years, there's probably going to be a GPA requirement that you need to reach in order to keep that scholarship. I can't tell you how many times someone would come in and say, you, you took away my money. And I'd say, I didn't take away your money. You had to get a 2.5 GPA to keep it. So just know what's required of you to get that money. OK, so on page 15, we have a worksheet that you can look at that award letter, or even if you're using that price calculator, and start comparing schools apples to apples and say, this is how much it costs to go there. This is how much grants and scholarships are going to give me. This is the net price, OK? So the cost <coughs> minus the free money is the net cost. And that's what you want to know how much exactly that school is going to cost you to go. OK, and this is just a great way to start looking at these schools to say, what's going to be an affordable option for me? Another great way to use this is if you decide to go to College A, I want you to see what that cost is going to be for that one year and then multiply that for the number of years you're going to be there and just realize is that money you're going to have to borrow because you don't want to borrow any more than what your first year salary is going to be when you get out. That's how we're not going to end up on the front page of the Bangor Daily, right? Saying I have $100,000 in debt. This is a great way to plan out the four years to get that bachelor's degree, what it's going to cost you if you're going to take out loans. Okay, so like I said, there's going to be things on the award letter that you're going to need to return. They're going to explain what they need from you. Make sure you get it back to them as soon as possible. Some schools have a deadline that if you don't return the documents by a certain time, they're just going to assume that you're not coming and they'll cancel it. They're going to give that money to somebody else. So just let, you know, make sure that you stay on top of those deadlines, but also let them know if you're not going to go there because if there's money that's sitting there waiting for you, another student could use that. So let them know if you're not going to go to that school. You also should let them know, as soon as you find out if you have a scholarship, like if you get a scholarship from the school, you need to let the financial aid office know as soon as possible to make sure that it's not going to affect any other aid that you might get. Follow up. So you might be selected for what's called verification. This is not a bad thing. So what this means is the government chooses randomly. They say randomly. I think there's kind of a, there's a process there. But they may say, the financial aid office is required to review everything that you said on the FAFSA. So you may have to provide them with tax information, the number of people in your household. You might have to send in W-2s. A lot of times what this means is something looked a little weird on your FAFSA. So we're just going to double check it for you, make corrections if you made a mistake. Nine times out of ten, this helped the student. So don't feel like this is a bad thing. Just make sure you get everything you need to them. Okay? And there's also deadlines for that too. So when you're looking at that award letter, what I want you guys to do is if you don't understand something that's on your award letter, let us know because sometimes schools may fill it with loans. I just want you to know the terms of those loans. And on our website, we have a, a great page that explains what each loan means, OK? Sometimes loans, if there's a program that you go into, like if you want to be a teacher, there are some loans that are actually, if you go in and teach after you graduate, it, the loans are forgiven. So this is a great way to just do some research on what those loans mean. If you're filing the FAFSA and you say, you know what, it, they didn't ask me about my grandmother lives with me, or my mom has medical expenses that are super high, and they, no one ever asked me about this, contact your financial aid office and let them know if there's some kind of a special circumstance. And what they can do is they can say, OK, so you have unusual medical expenses. We can go in as a financial aid office and adjust your FAFSA based on expenses that you might have that maybe no one else has. Or maybe there's been a divorce, and now that income is cut in half. So just notify if there's anything that is unusual to you, please notify the financial aid office. Um, if, one of the things I would love to see everyone do um, usually about July, let's say July 1st-ish, you're going to get your bill. I want you to look at that bill and see is there anything on that bill that you can take out. Like the first thing they're going to charge you for is health insurance. But if you already have your own health insurance, you can waive it. So at Husson, that was like $1,500.
So that's a, a good chunk of change right off the top. I want you to reduce your expenses if you can. Maybe we live in um, the ghetto dorm and not the suites. You know, maybe we don't have a single room, which is an extra charge. Look on there and see if there's anything we can take off that expense that you might be borrowing for that you don't need to have. Like a premium meal plan or the premium parking. So just really look at your bill as well is what I'm saying. Um, Another thing I would love to see you guys do is shop around for your textbooks. My youngest is an environmental science major. His books this semester were $1,000. And after I got done choking, then we went on to um, some websites and we did some searching for his books and we saved $433. I, it's very specific, $433 we saved on his books. Um, but there's a, like half.com is like an eBay for books where you, as a student, could actually, after the end of the semester, go and sell your books. Maybe use that money to buy somebody else's books. So there's a lot of money they can save there. Savings, so key. Please tell me everyone here is saving for college. Every dollar that you save is one that you do not have to borrow. I will talk about this forever, but I'm not going to. But when the award letter isn't enough, what I want you guys first to do is say, all right, how much have I saved? Start using that. See if you can break that bill up by maybe paying with a payment plan, which is your balance per semester divided by so many payments. Usually it's um, interest-free, interest but maybe you have to pay a fee to do the payment plan. Maybe you could do a mix of payment plan and loans. Um, be very creative. I had some <coughs> students that, that would sell things, like their, you know, their iPad or whatever, to help pay for their school. There's a million ways I would like to see you look to reduce that bill rather than loans. It's very easy to sign on that dotted line. So let's just do whatever we can to not do that. Or as little as we can, okay? There is a Parent Plus loan that parents can apply for. It's credit based. It's in the parent's name, not the student, and they can never transfer to the student. Um, if a parent is denied for a Parent Plus loan, the student can get more in their Stafford loan. So that's something to consider. That's always, I'd rather see a Stafford loan than a private loan. Private loans I put on bottom, that's like our plan Z, okay? If you still need to borrow money after the Stafford loan and all your scholarships and grants, private loans is a loan in the student's name, it's credit based, so you'll need a co-signer. But it's just really hard to pay off your Stafford loans and then adding private loans on top of that. So let's do whatever we can to not do that if we can. They're fine, I mean they're not horrible, it's just one more thing that Students will have to, I'm trying to keep the students from moving back home after graduation, right? Because we don't have to have them move home so they can make their student loan payments. That's key. Okay, so saving for college. There are a lot of different ways that you can save for college and it's not too late. I know you guys are thinking, seniors, I don't have time. Um, the 529 plan, what that is is a way for you to save for college. It's an investment plan. But if you use it for educational expenses, you don't have to pay taxes on earnings like you would a regular investment plan. That's it's the state's 529. It's named after the IRS section 529. So if you open up uh, Maine's 529, we will put $200 in it for you to get you started. So you open a 529 plan with $25, and we will put $200 in it for you. It's designed for younger kids, but there's no age limit on it, so anyone can do this. Okay. Um, if you put money in, my seniors, if you guys are working and you put money in this, we will match 50 cents on the dollar for every dollar you put in. So this is, this is, there's not a catch to this. We want you to be borrowing so that, we want you to be saving so you are not borrowing, okay? There's also the Coverdale Savings, which is another um, tax sheltered savings plan for higher education. And there's traditional, uh, there's Roth IRAs. Um, there's a lot of more information in the books that I gave you guys, but I highly suggest there's the red brochures up front. Please take that, and if you need help setting one up, you can call Fame and we'll help you with that. So for anyone, I mean, this is kind of way down the road, but when you start paying off your student loans, Maine has um, a tax credit that you can use. If my, any of my people here have already graduated and you have some student loan debt, there are ta tax credits for you going to college or having student loan debt, okay? So as you do your taxes, um, in 2017, 
just keep in mind there's tax um, breaks for being in college. There's all kinds of additional resources. I YouTube everything. Just you know, Fame has a YouTube channel where we will show you how to do things like the IRS data retrieval. We do like little short webinars, um, little videos on how to do things. So you can go to our website. There's a lot of information there. Talk to your guidance office. Always a wealth of information. And in January, we're going to hold a FAFSA lab at the United Technology Center up on Hogan Road. Please come. We're going to have volunteers from financial aid offices around the area that will come and help you file your FAFSA. Okay? And there's also a scholarship drawing for all the people that go to these. There's going to be 22 lab locations around the state in January. So if this one doesn't work for you, there's going to be more. Okay? This is our contact information. I urge you guys to like us on Facebook. We always do notifications about what to do and when. There's also, I think, on the last page or close to the last page of that green book, there's a senior and junior checklist of what to do and when. It's really helpful. Um, but also, I did, there's a sign-in sheet in the back. If you guys list your email, we'll send you an update to let you know the FAFSA website is open. Let's go do our FAFSA or come up to UTC and we'll help you complete the FAFSA. Do you guys have questions? I think I went by that really fast. Did I cover it all? Yes. What time, January 13th? Oh, 6 p.m. Thank you. You're welcome. We're going to be there from 6 to 8, so That's if you can't come at 6, we'll be there for a while. Yes? Um, I think the maximum contribution, I want to say it's $10,000, but that I could be thinking about Coverdale. Total or a year? A year. Yeah. Yes. Maximum contribution to the 529 savings plan. I, I'm, I'm either confusing, I've got some information out that I, I can show you, but I think it's $10,000 a year. I think. Great question. You stumped the band. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Anyone else? Yes. Can you talk about the matching contribution? I would love to. Okay. So, um, if you open an account, so have you heard about the Alphon grant, the $500 for babies? Um, Harold Alphon gave a bunch of money so that if every baby born after 2013 is going to have a $500 savings account, they don't have to do anything. You can use that to open this, but those, all you guys missed out on that, right? So you open an account with $25 and we'll put in $200. We want to have you grow the savings. Great question. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so is it, it's not next gen? It's from another organization, maybe? It's what? Okay. Um, so you can transfer that. You would have to work with Merrill Lynch to do that. But if you open it with $25, um, we'll put in $200. But then after that, whatever you put in by the end of this year will match $0.50 cents on the dollar up to $300. So if you put $600 in by the time December 31st rolls around, we'll put in $300. And if you do um, automatic payment, we'll do a one-time $100 grant for six payments. So that's... It's laid out in here. It's a little bit better than how I explain it, but it is an amazing program, and it it hasn't always been this fantastic. But we're really trying to get people to not borrow to save before that. And this actually, great question you asked: Is it in the parent's name or the student's name? So anyone who's over 18 can open this. What I would urge you to do is have a parent open it and have the student as the beneficiary. The student can be the, the owner and the beneficiary, but if it's in the parent's name, it's, um, it's a more protected on the FAFSA. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Great question, thank you. He is not a plant. <laughs> Anyone else? If you have a next gen, can you open another that No. Well, if you have a next gen, you can continue to open next gens, and you can, the only grant that you can get more than, because it's supposed to be one grant per beneficiary, so like if you opened one for whoever, and then somebody else opened them, 
open one for them. They could, everyone could put money in it for you, but that person would only get that one grant for opening, one grant for matching. But you could do a bunch of different ACHs and still get a $100 grant for doing six on-time payments, on-time contributions. That's the only one that they will give you more than one of. Yes, so, so super confusing. So um, say you have a son that you open up an next gen for, they will only give um, the initial matching grant, the $200, only one time to the son. For the money that you put in, they will only match 50% to one time. But if more than one person opens an account for him, then they could get a $100 grant for each six contributions on time for each program, for each next gen that is open for him. So basically what I'm saying is, just to be less confusing, it's only one grant per, per student, unless it's the ACH. That one you can have multiple of. Oh, I'm sorry, ACH is an automatic um, contribution. So you sign up um, a payroll deduction, and they automatically pay, you know, say put $50 a month into the NextGen account. Thank you, I'm sorry. I'm in my head sometimes. I think everyone knows what I'm talking about. Yes. Does that make sense? I don't want to lose anyone on that. I'm going to be here for a while, so if you guys have questions, please let me know. I, I will say after. These are great questions. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm going to be here. My card is up on the table. I can be your person. If you guys have questions you don't want to talk about right now, that's fine. You can email me. Most of the time I'm on the road, which I adore coming to talk to you guys. This is like the best part of my day. Um, so email is great. If you don't get a, an answer from me, I'm probably in callous or on my way and don't have um, self-service. So um, please take any information out there. Any questions you have, please give us a call. We would be more than happy. We are here in the summertime when maybe the school isn't open and you get your bill, you don't know what to do. Give us a call and we'll help you out. Thanks for coming. Thank you.